And I, you know, I don't know if you guys ever wondered, do you ever wondered how the different parts of God's armor actually correspond with everything? I don't know if you guys have ever heard a sermon. I, I haven't actually heard a sermon about um, what all the different parts um, of the armor and how, what makes them significant. But, um, you know, my idea is, and I don't know if this is, the, this is the right answer, but the thought I came up with, when it says having your loins girt about with truth, you know, truth is almost like the belt that keeps your pants up, right? Or keeps whatever you're wearing down here up. And, you know, why do we wear pants? Why do we wear those clothes? Well, it's to hide our nakedness, isn't it? So the thought I had when we have our loins girt about with truth, it's almost like truth is what is keeping us from being ashamed. And that verse in 1 John 2 comes to mind where it talks about, you know, abide in the truth that we won't be ashamed before him at his coming. Uh, so you have your loins girt about with truth, then you have the breastplate of righteousness. So how, why is it a breastplate of righteousness? And the thought there is, well, the breastplate is to protect your heart. So if you're walking in the Spirit and you have the righteousness of God coming through you, your heart is right with God, and, it, and, and that's what I, how I think it relates to um, the spiritually, um, keeping your heart right, the, the righteousness of God. And then you have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh, yeah. Verse 15, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So there's a preparation there to, to get ready to, to bring the gospel out, isn't it? So the fact that it's shoes and you're shodding yourself, when you put your shoes on, you're ready to leave, aren't you? When you come home, you take your shoes off. When you're ready to go somewhere, you're ready to leave, you put your shoes on. And that's why the gospel of peace is something that we are meant to be proactive about. We're meant to go and preach the gospel. And then you have the shield of faith. So why is faith considered a shield? Because when you're fighting and you're holding a shield, generally the shield is there to defend you from things that you're not looking at, right? You're fighting with your, with your sword and you're holding your shield and you've got your eyes forward and you're just, you've got that shield there to, to defend you from anything that you don't have your eyes on. Things that you're not expecting, things that, you ha that, you, that you're unaware of. And that's what faith is like because, you know, the, the devil may throw a, a, a curveball at you, right? Where a question that you don't know how to answer, a contradiction that you may not know the answer to or uh, some sort of objection to the gospel. But faith says, you know what, I don't know the answer, but I'm going to believe the Bible anyway until I know the answer. So that's why it's a shield of faith that protects you from the unexpected. What else was there? Shield of faith, where you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation. So I was thinking, why is salvation a helmet? And, and my first thought was, and maybe you guys have some thoughts on this too, but the helmet of salvation, because when people don't know whether they're saved, they're consumed with that, aren't they? Their mind is consumed with figuring out, am I saved or not? They're doubting their salvation. But when you know you have salvation, I think what it does is it, keeps you, it gives you a sound mind so that you can, it protects your, your mind. Um, that's why it's a helmet. And the last one is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, which is the Bible, which is our, our offensive weapon, isn't it? Our sword. And that's what we use. Because, you know, the Bible likens... You know, evangelism and soul winning in a fight. But we're not actually, we're not in a physical fight. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Ours is a spiritual fight. It's a, it's a fight of words, isn't it? Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The fight that we're in is, is a battle of the mind. It's a battle of words. And that's why the word of God is, is our weapon. Because it's where all our words should be based on. 